financial aid application, the federal form, the FAFSA, free application for federal student aid. Colleges who have their own funds um, also require their students to complete the CSS profile. But for the um, purpose of this um, session, I wanted to focus on FAFSA because all students applying for financial aid would fill out the FAFSA. Now the FAFSA is a, an 11 page document that pulls in the information both on the income and assets of the student as well as the parent. Um, so you see uh, gross income, um, some of the particular assets on the bottom, uh, the investments which include the uh, parents, uh, not the retirement but secondary um, real estate um, any other investments that the parents have. Uh, the primary residence is not included in the parent's asset on this form. So what the f financial aid offices do is they get the, the output information from the FAFSA, which includes the expected family contribution. They also, by federal regulation, have to come up with a cost of attendance, which is a budget based on the different student populations they have on campus. They break it down between independent students and dependent students, um, often between graduate school programs and undergraduates, and even within that, um, based on certain majors. Medical and health uh, majors have more um, costs associated with them than a, an English major. They also break it up based on on-campus and off-campus housing. So they take the cost of education, subtract the expected family contribution, and they come up with the need. And that's what the colleges will attempt to fill. Most colleges don't fully fund or fully meet that need. They, they do what's called gapping, which they will fund up to a certain percentage of every student's need. So I broke this down into three different scenarios. If Paul and his wi wife received the $400,000 and uh, did not, re uh, there was no inheritance, the second scenario is. Oh, by, by, by the way, I, this question came up in a previous sentence. So is there, is there any issue of the expectancy of an inheritance on these forms? Remember, one of the big issues with the divorces, you can actually say, well, what do you think your parents are going to give you? Right. Does that get considered at all? So if, I, if, if, if Jack and Jill have got fabulously wealthy grandparents, but their parents are dying, right? Does, does the grandparents' assets get considered at all? No. The FAFSA and the profile only look at what is happening in the student income and assets and parents' income and assets at the time of filing the form. So anything that's out there potentially in the future is not calculated. So in this scenario, they did not receive any inheritance. Um, the family, uh, the parents have $100,000 in income. In the formula, the federal formula considers $35,000, a little over that, for, um, from the income that can be applied and used for education. Because they have two in the kids in the family that are going to college at the same time, that gets divided up. So only $17,624 is considered for um, the son as well as the daughter. So if the two of them weren't going to college, would all 35,000 be right. considered? If so right. if Jill had been a, like a year younger than Jack and only one of them were going in? Right. I see, because this gets reconsidered once once a year. Right, right. They, you apply once a year. And, and, and is the 35,000, 
Is that like a fixed, like a cap number, or is that a percentage of what their actual incomes are? It's a percentage, and it's based on a number of factors, including the age of the oldest parent. In this scenario, I've used the age 55 for the, for the father, so it's going to be based on the father's um, age. Assets and income are set aside. Uh, a portion of that is set aside based on the age of the parent, oldest parent, <coughs> assuming that's going to be used for retirement. Okay. Um, because the federal formula does not include assets in the primary residence, um, they weren't looking at anything under the assets. With the student... And, and, and yeah. is that because there's a, there's a given amount of assets below which they just zero it out? Because they did have some assets. They had, they had an IRA, they had some, some cash. Right. The other assets were not included because of the age of, of the, the parent. Okay in the set aside. With the student, I gave him $5,000 of income and $2,000 of assets. In the formula, it did not look at the $5,000 of income, and it only took $400 of the $2,000 that the student had in savings. So you add the $17,624 and the $400, and you get the $18,000 expected family contribution for that scenario, for that, for that one student. In the second scenario, I assume that the parents inherited the, the full $400,000. So you have the same income information. Uh, again, the, it's split based on the two in family. The assets are now set at $27,515 out of that $400,000. So it's assumed that that amount would be available this particular year to pay for college. Right. And then the student's information remained the same. So again, you add the 45,000 to the 400, and you get 45,538. By, by, by the way, in this situation, were the assets also um, uh, like split in half? Right. So this is a, this was assuming this was split. that yeah. Jack and Jill are both going to college, right. and each of them is going to be able to get 27,000. Right. So if, if just Jack were going to college, that it number would have that number would have gone doubled, up. Doubled. Yes. Okay. okay. So in the third scenario. Um, the money was given directly to the student. So the parent situation reverts back to the first scenario where the income that's being used for the one student is a $17,000 and because the primary residence is the only real estate and the other assets um, were not taken into consideration based on the parent's age, we now still have the $17,624 as the parent's contribution to the um, eligibility. Um, the student, however, again, this, the income is zero out of that $5,000 based on the formula. But now, of that $400,000, the federal government is saying this student can contribute $80,000 this year based on his assets and income. So if you add the $80,400 and the $17,624, the family EFC is now $98,024. What does that uh, end up meaning for a student who wants to go to Worcester State? Well, the most recent information that I have for tuition and fees for Worcester State for a student who is going to be living on campus, and I'm including tuition fees, room and board, living expenses, commuting expenses, books and supplies. The on-campus budget is $21,733, so almost $22,000. The first scenario, we had $18,000 EFC, so there would be some eligibility for financial aid. The second scenario, the um, EFC expected family contribution was about $45,000, so this student would only be eligible for federal student loans. Um, and in the third scenario, um, the student would, would not be eligible for anything but student loans and federal student loans and private loans. If the student was going to Harvard, the most recent information on Harvard's uh, tuition, room and board, living on campus is $56,000. So in the first scenario, there'd be plenty of eligibility for financial aid. As an aside, Harvard on average gives out $44,000 a year uh, for an incoming freshman for financial aid. Um, that doesn't mean 
every student is going to get financial aid. It depends on who gets to complete their application first and is first to be reviewed because financial aid is given out on a first come, first served basis.